Today on December 18th, what year is it? 2019, that's that's what year it is. We have received the 1.12 update on Modern Warfare, which has included quite a bit of new content that is here for us. Now I'm gonna be reading off every single update or change that is in this new update. I will leave the link down in the description to where I got all of it. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump straight into this video. There is so much information, I'm just gonna be reading off the screen, so I apologize. But first, we have a couple new things that have come to Modern Warfare, which I'm sure that you guys have already heard some of it. We have a new operator, Nikto. Nikto, one of the two. We have a couple new maps, which I'm super excited for my download to finish so that I can play. And that's gonna be Shipment and Vacant. And then we also have Winter Docks, which is just the winter version of the 2v2 map, Docks. We also got Vacant and Shipment 24-7, which is awesome. I hope they didn't ruin these maps for us. We have Cranked, and the original Gunfight is back, so it's not that OSP game mode where you have to pick up the weapons. New Special Operations Strongbox, and a new Classic Special Operation Missions Disinform and Bomb Squad. Next, we have quite a few general fixes. We have a fix for a bug that causes players to be stuck in a update requires restart loop. Fix for a bug where creating a custom mode would prevent access to private match game mode options. Fix for players disconnecting and experiencing the turtle error code. I have not received that. I, I guess some of you guys have. I haven't even heard of that. Fix for a bug where the green new notification icon was not clearing off the screen even though there wasn't any new items to view. Implemented fixes for various exploits and boosting techniques. Awesome. No more boosting, even though I haven't seen a single person boost in this game yet. Fixed for some players experiencing a drift while using an Xbox controller. Fixed two bugs that could cause players to accidentally use multiple XP tokens due to a delay between clicking the button and confirmation on our end, or their end. Fixed an issue where care packages would fall through the roof of various buildings and ports. Is that really a bad thing? I mean, we all hate it when it gets stuck on the roof and we can't get in. It's just... It's fucking annoying. Fix the bug where players were unable to swap field upgrades after selecting Field Upgrade Pro. Attempting to deploy the weapon drop field upgrade at the beginning of a round base mode would result in the field upgrade becoming unusable until the player responds. And that has been fixed. Fix the bug where all tablet based killstreaks or field upgrades have a zoomed in view when using an Anila Palace. How do you say that map? I don't know. I don't care. Made some slight UI adjustments to the base and officer rank progression screens to both have similar designs. Fixed for watches not appearing in mode with preset loadouts. Added a new mini that allows players to launch a specific trial, which is great. I, I didn't really play many trials, but maybe for you people that have, I'm sure that you'll enjoy that. Fixed the bug that caused keybinds to reset to the default value. Friend request and party invite notification options will be set to enabled by default after this patch. Players can disable that option through the account tab on the options menu. I'm not popular, so I don't know what it's like to receive notifications. Implemented several settings for the auto sprint option. Always sprint and always super sprint. Cool. I, I guess. <laughs> Added an auto move forward feature for keyboard and mouse as well as controller. So I guess you don't need to move your joystick? Is, is that what's happening? I don't know how that works. For keyboard and mouse, a keybind can be added in the options menu via the advanced section of move forward. For controller, when this feature is enabled in the options menu, it can be activated in game by pushing the movement stick forward twice. So that explains it. Push your stick up twice or whatever button you have on keyboard and mouse and your character will continue to move forward until you stop that process. <sighs> Why was that such a mouthful for me? For a keyboard and mouse, there's improved navigation in the store and battle pass menus. Added a change zoom or toggle hybrid behavior gameplay option to change which keybind triggers the chain zoom and toggle hybrid. Some changes to the audio include footsteps, reduced audible range of third person footsteps, increased occlusion on footsteps, I hope I said that right, 
added various folly sounds, foley sounds that played at a larger range than footsteps during ADS and crouch movements. It's fixed for air vehicles, not occluding properly. General occlusion adjustments to all air vehicles and a fix for knife impact sounds missing from kill cams. Now we have a couple weapon changes which include the adjustments in the hip spread for the 357 snake shot so it's consistent regardless of stance which was a huge problem and I'm glad that they fixed that which actually might make it more overpowered. I'm not sure. Reduced flinch on the car 98k, EBR 14, and M. K2 carbine. I've really never used any of those weapons, but I'm sure if they're fixing it, then it was probably a problem. For PC, there are several fixes were implemented to prevent crashes and improve stability. Special Operations Survival was fixed for various exploit fixes, or they had various exploit fixes. Classic Special Operations, they fixed a bug where players were receiving inconsistent amount of XP. Now for our special ops, again, I've never played special ops, but they have quite a few fixes for this. Fix for rank up UI splashes not working as intended. When using a respawn flare, no UI icon would appear on the minimap in Operation Harbinger. I think that's one of the new operations. Fix the bug where pistols were dealing too much damage against juggernauts compared to other weapon classes. In Operation Crosswind, nearby enemies will not become alerted if a player uses a rocket launcher, causing the player to not break stealth. And this has been fixed. Fix the bug where players were able to go prone with the minigun if they get revived while having it equipped. This doesn't make any sense, maybe I'm, I'm just not understanding, but added the reward players could earn if completing operation within the playlist menu. So I would assume they're saying they added some kind of award for players to earn, maybe? I don't know what they tried to say. Last but not least, we have some Call of Duty leak changes and that will be the end of these patch notes. They reduced the lethality of non-car explosives and made adjustments to spawns for hardpoint. For search and destroy, they fixed a bug where the defending team could see the bomb carrier objective icon. And with the weapon pings on minimap option is enabled, or when it's enabled, the bomb carrier would not show as a red dot on the minimap when shooting their weapon. And that has also been fixed. Now for Codcaster, they added an in-game data view to display various stats, which is really cool, and implemented support for domination. And that's going to be everything that we have on this list. Again, I'm going to leave it down in the description if you guys want to go over it yourself. But that's going to be the end of this video. If you have any tips on what I can change to make my videos overall more entertaining for you guys, just let me know. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. As always, I love you guys, I appreciate you guys, and I will see y'all in the next one.